Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Anto. So, 2024 is already off to a bad start. I thought that we would get some good things coming out of the new year, but unfortunately, at least in the sense of YouTube, people have been retiring. And for good reason, obviously. But we're losing some pretty big, notable people who have impacted the YouTube culture for quite some time or as of recent. So people like Tom Scott, for example, or Seth Everman, uh, technically Meat Canyon, even though he's only been around for five years and his goodbye video is kind of clickbaity. Uh, and then, of course, we have, as of recent, Matt Pat from The Game Theorist. And I wanted to talk about this as somebody who is smaller and just getting into YouTube and have watched these channels over the course of the years. Less so with Meat Canyon because he is a bit newer-ish, kind of. But people like Tom Scott or people like Matt Pat who have been in the YouTube game for decades at this point i mean freaking matt pat could have gone for a couple more for three more years if that and he would have been in youtube for 20 years making a career out of it and he and plenty of the others who have been retiring as of recent have done so much success in youtube that they've pretty much established themselves as notable people who have created youtube's culture uh, to be what it is today now granted there are plenty of different things that come out on youtube but you can't say without a shadow of a doubt that if you are somebody who frequently consumes youtube material that you haven't ran into any content that may involve or reference someone like matt pat for example and him leaving you know like someone like myself and plenty of others who are within the gaming sphere are a bit saddened by it but he has his reasons, obviously. We knew that we couldn't do this forever. We knew that, honestly, we didn't want to do this forever. For as much as I love you, and I love overthinking things, and I love theorizing, I don't love late nights. I don't love the fact that Steph and I have been work first for over a decade, where I'm sitting down at dinner with my best friend, and we're talking about business logistics. And... Yes, I know it, he is emotional with this, but you have to let like take this into account that he grew this channel single-handedly granted of course with his now wife, but he all he pretty much did a lot of this stuff on his own. He did a lot of the graphics in the early days by himself. He did a lot of all of the writing, the scripting and the animations and everything that you could think of regarding his content and eventually it became so popular that he was able to make a company out of it he was able to expand to four different uh, other channels uh, to continue growing on his brand and he himself has caused a cultural shift by the whole entire that's just a game theory uh, slogan people plenty of people even myself have used that that's just a theory or some variation of it by just for the reasons of MatPat. And, you know, this isn't something that he could have really like forced upon people. This is something that he definitely was just doing for passion and found a catchy slogan and used that at the end of every video and as he grew in popularity so did that catchy slogan and many people started using it as a result matt pat has created something beyond just game theory he's created culture he's created a, a sphere of influence within this community that may never go away and it's sad to see these people go, but you have to take into account, like I just said, if he would have gone on for three more years, he would have been in the game for 20. And he says himself in the video, people don't realize he, he looks really good for his age. Don't get me wrong. The man is pushing 40. <laughs> like, he's got a kid and he's got family he's got to take care of. And he mentions that in the video that YouTube being in this for so long, it takes him away from all of that. And that's something I think people tend to forget with channels that have become so big like this, where they see the person on the screen, they hear the voice, they have that association, and then they create this 
image, this icon of who that person is and what they are for what content they're providing and forget the fact that they are human. Now, it works both ways, obviously. Uh, it, for the people who comment, like, say, on his videos or even on mine, for the few that do, and I appreciate every single one of you, I have to recognize that you are also a person behind the screen that is reaching out to me. Granted, you can see my pretty face, but at the same time, I have to recognize that although you're not putting your face out there, I know that you're looking at a screen just as much as I am right now. And knowing that we are all human and that we have our own lives and that we can't really push this stuff onto ourselves, it makes it hard because, and you, he says it himself, and I know that there are plenty of other YouTubers who have made similar comments in the past, like Markiplier or any other gaming channel or someone who pushes content uh, to this degree, when they start having other things outside of their lives come into fruition, they have to balance between making content and living their lives. And Matt Pat said himself that it was hard to do that. It was hard to wake up in the morning and not think about work. And the fact that you two, a, lot, a job that he says and plenty of other people say uh, that is a dream job to do, eventually turns into work. Now, hopefully, for me... Granted, I'm starting new, and who knows where this channel is going to go. I hope that this doesn't become work for me. I like posting videos every now and then, whenever I can, about topics. And I hope that when the day comes, if the day comes, I'm going to say if, because who knows, YouTube is a bit weird. But if the day comes that I end up becoming a channel fairly large, that... I don't end up becoming sucked into that life of treating YouTube as work. It's fun for me to post these videos, and it's sad to see these people go. But you have to recognize that when they establish an image, a, like a channel that becomes so iconic that the lives that they have to take to make it bigger to maintain its status like game theory has according to social blade has been out since 2009 and the fact that it's still going strong is crazy to me almost 20 years of content being pushed something like tom scott for example how his content just freaking explodes basically and he's been in the game for almost as long too how can it not be work to maintain all that how can it not pull you away from your life especially when the, the milestones that come of it getting married having kids you know getting a house how does all of that not get pushed to the side when you're waking up every morning trying to figure out what you want to make next and it's nice that he's able to go on a high note you know, 2023 was the year of YouTube apologies, and 2024 seems to be the year of YouTubers retiring, in a good way, obviously. You know, we want them to go on their own terms. And he says himself in the video that uh, YouTubers typically leave in one of two ways. Either they leave at their height, or they fizzle away into non-existence. When you think about it, there's only really two ways to step away from a YouTube channel. You either just decide the day that you stop uploading and you're like, I'm done, or you just keep uploading videos from now until the heat death of the universe and you watch as your relevance slowly dies or your passion slowly dies. And for me and my journey in this place, I always wanted to go out on a high note. And when you stop and look at the last year, this has been the best year in the theorist lifespan. Obviously, there's also the third option that he did not mention, but because, you know, it would be very distasteful if he did, which is YouTubers getting canceled for doing stuff that they weren't supposed to be doing offline. <laughs> so clearly, you know, he wants to end on his high note. And he has this established, he says in the video that for the past three years, he's been trying to get new 
creators up to speed with the channel that he has established. And with all four of them now going to be having their own respective hosts who have shown their faces and heard their voices throughout each channel, they're going to be the new caretakers of game theory, food theory, film theory, uh, style theory. Will this affect the channels when the due date comes? In March 9th, the day of uh, Game Theory's end, will branch into a new phoenix and rise again? Will it continue down this road? And my personal opinion is there's going to be a lot of people who have stuck around for a long time liking his stuff, hearing his voice, seeing his face. I, for one of them, too. And then there's also those who came in during his FNAF stuff, his Five Nights at Freddy's uh, content. And back when that was massive, thanks to Markiplier in a lot of ways, but MatPat also rode that train, and that gave him a big boost, too. Will those people also be staying around? Will they continue to pump out more Five Nights at Freddy's content? to try and appease them but i think it's still going to impact it right when you've been the face for nearly 20 years when you've been the voice for nearly 20 years and then you up and leave now granted he's not just disappearing he is going to be leaving sometime in the future and he's not going to be gone forever he's still going to show his face but he's not going to be the face anymore he's not going to be the voice anymore is that going to keep people? And in my opinion, they're going to see a dip come March. I hope not. I hope people do stay around. But when you look at how many people view his videos on game theory, where they're always over at least 2 million, there's going to be a good chance that we may see a dip for a while. It's not going to be forever. Because the type of content that they make is still entertaining, is still fun, and could potentially still draw a new crowd. Who may not necessarily know who MatPat is. Maybe they'll look at older content and see that there is a new, like an older host at the time and like that content and then wonder where this guy went and then see him occasionally every now and then on uh, Game Theory Live and all that stuff. But I have a very strong feeling that maybe for the first few months that game theory, food theory, maybe film theory, maybe suit theory, all that stuff, whatever style theory. I, and it's a new channel, okay? <laughs> I, I barely even knew about style theory until like the apology video came out, all right? Give me a break. But uh, yeah, I think they're going to see a dip. And who knows if they'll be able to maintain it. I think they will. I just don't think that it, they're going to be seeing the same numbers for quite some time because a lot of people like myself who were around for ages may leave. Now, I'm not going to leave. I have no intentions to leave. I've been subscribed for as long as I could remember, but I, I can see why some people may not want to stick around because when you've established yourself for so long and haven't diversified beyond that, or diversified but not enough to where you're still the dominant figure in the circle, it's going to be tough. But regardless of the direction that these channels go, what matters is that MatPat is able to have a life for himself, live life for himself with his wife, with his kids, and enjoy it. Because when you've created something as big as what he has, you definitely know that he is living the dream. And all he needs to do now is just be set free. So, congratulations to Matt Pat. Congratulations to Tom Scott and many of the others who are retiring. I hope that every single one of you guys uh, manages to live your life to the fullest now that you are free of obligation, that you are free of work. This is pretty much it from me. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you like this kind of content, like the video, comment down below. I'll catch all y'all later. Peace.